one of the biggest hurdles we had to overcome is to have the community believe that we could actually do what we said we could do. I mean, it's been more than a decade of development to get these pieces of equipment to the point that they're at, where you can go out and do an experiment like this. And it's sort of long-term investment that I think is going to transform how we do ocean science. We've been exploring this eddy field for a month, using a host of autonomous underwater vehicles and a laboratory full of scientists. Some people think of the ocean as sort of one big homogenous water column, but in fact it's really peppered with all these different ecosystems, right, akin to maybe like their own little islands. We're studying this microscopic fluid jungle, the biological hotspot sitting maybe 100 meters below the surface. These eddies host unique microbial habitats. These uh, microscopic organisms, essential to life on planet Earth, they're moving with the ocean currents. It is so difficult to study these ecosystems. With traditional techniques, we can take a snapshot of life in these microbial habitats, but new technology is letting us stay locked into them for days at a time. On a robotic submarine that is smart enough to dive down, find that biological hotspot, and then sit in it and move with it. The fact that we're out in the ocean Autonomously doing genomic sampling is pretty awesome. So it's, I mean, this has never been done before and it's taken a ton of people and a lot of time to get there, but it's, it's a huge success in my opinion. There's this data shortage, right, in oceanography. So these robots and these gliders and AUVs, they are showing us that we can start looking at the ocean in much more detail. So that's really exciting. This time we have something that's looking at the water around where we're doing our profiles looking at the same features we're looking at. It's really neat to have that data that is going to actually help us put into context what we've been collecting. We get the opportunity to bring advanced technologies and traditional methods together to observe their lives from their perspective. Certain genes are only turned on in certain times of the day, so to really understand what organisms are active, you might need to track um, through the full day-night cycle and take a bunch of time points in a day. You know, we're constantly sleep deprived, throwing off our own schedules to take these samples. For me, I do get seasick, so I'm pretty excited about the idea of having robots that can go collect DNA samples for me. I think this is great. Since we set sail one month ago, the phytoplankton in the ocean have absorbed around 4 billion tons of carbon. Things that live in the ocean, fish, sharks, whales, all of that mass starts as carbon dioxide that is then transformed by these phytoplankton into organic material. And that is rippled up the food chain. The process of nitrogen fixation is really tied to carbon fixation. Um, and it's important for us to understand this process in order to understand how the ocean regulates the climate. Being out here, looking out at the vast blue ocean with no land in sight, and then seeing our trash flow by the ship. For some reason, like the plastic in the ocean just really sort of hits home. It, like, it punches people right in the stomach. And... It gets a lot of attention because we can see it and we can see that we are harming life in the ocean. A lot of what these missions can accomplish is, is you know, sort of testifying to the things that we can't see with our eyes. For the microbes, I think the bigger impacts are the warming temperatures. There's been this amazing time series over the past 25 years where scientists have come and taken basic measurements once a month for decades so that we can now see, yes, the pH is slowly decreasing in the ocean. Yes, temperature is rising and then we're trying to understand how microbial communities will respond to that so that we can accurately predict a future climate. You need to know what's going on and you need to know quickly because uh, things are changing really fast. And the ocean is so vast and our need to understand it is so critical that we have to do something different. Whenever you're able to achieve something that you couldn't before, 
it always gives you hope for the future. The things that are you know, cutting edge right now will be routine in three years and then people like me won't be directly involved. It'll be the people using the tools and discovering new things about the environment with them. On increasingly bigger scales until we achieve a mechanistic understanding of operation ecosystem dynamics that's more important now than ever before.